Hello everybody, I am Still Bones, in case you forgot who I am. I am going to be explaining every aspect of lighting within Roblox Studio, including the three main sources of light, how each can be taken into your advantage, overview of lighting properties and explaining each part, showcasing different lighting modes and which ones are optimal, as well as how to make your lighting look good. Plus some tips and tricks at the end. I'm going to quickly turn off the lights, so I can provide examples for all the source lights. Wow the stars are so cool. Let me set up the lights. Right click the part, add object and type in point light, this is our main source of light, and the most commonly used point of light. The range slider allows you to change how far the light illuminates, Roblox caps range at 60 studs. I've turned up the brightness here to show you the range more sharply, however an optimal brightness level is around 15, or variating on your scene. The color section allows you to change the color of the light being emitted. OK party is over now. That sure was fun, let's give this light a warm tint. The enable button simply allows you to toggle whether the light is on or off. Cast shadow toggles whether the light emits shadows through parts or not. It is optimal to have shadows on to avoid light flowing into places it shouldn't. What I've set up here is a showcasing area to explain the two other sources of lighting, spotlight and surface light. The first major difference between point light and spotlight is the fact that spotlight emits light from a single spot outwards at a straight angle, compared to a point light in which it emits a full 360 sphere of light around the part. The spotlight has similar properties to the point light, however it has an extra property. Angle this allows you to change the angle at which the light is emitted, allowing for a larger radius of light to be shown. You can also change the direction of the light emission through the faces property. Ok that's a lot of faces, normally people only have one. The range properties are pretty similar to the point light, however it is more about length than general radius. Let's move on to the next light source, surface light. This source is very similar to spotlight, however it emits light from the surface of the part and is variable depending on the size of the part. Surface lights have similar properties otherwise, allowing you to change their color, range, angle and brightness. Here is an example of the light changing shape with the part. That concludes the evaluation of all three light sources on Roblox, surface light, spot light, and point light. I've set up a small terrain scene for this next trick, keep in mind I didn't make these terrain meshes, they are scans of real terrain. Sorry guys I am not that skilled yet. For this example I am going to replicate lava, this lighting technique is called two-point lighting, allow me to showcase it. Firstly we want to make the lava, lava colored, and give it a material emission, such as neon. From here you could give it a texture, or overlay texture, or even material variant, however I am educating you on the lighting right now, do as you will. Keep in mind for warmer scenes which complement darker environments, it is not just the actual light emission that makes the scene, you have to keep in mind how continuity works, where is the light coming from? And is it the same color? Here I've got this all set up, let's make the scene a bit darker for this, you can change the overall brightness in lighting properties under the brightness slider. You are going to want to have your light points adorned to an attachment, meaning they are connected to an attachment, allowing you to move them freely and more easily. Here you can see him allocating the point light color to be identical to the lava part color, this is a form of continuity, as it would look weird if green light was coming from a purple neon. The two-point lighting technique follows two rules, have one light close to the source, which is high in brightness, but low in range. And another light point similar to the one below, however it is raised up higher, and has a lower brightness and a higher range. This effectively replicates global illuminations, which are not officially supported within Roblox, here is a drawn diagram I made a while back. While in most cases it is important to make your light point identically colored to the source part, sometimes they don't match, so you have to change it yourself to fit the colors. And manipulate it in your own way to make it fit. Here is the final shot so far. Let's take a look at the light points inside of it, it's really interesting to see the lights have a physical form. I edited my brightness a little. The only thing missing now is the actual atmosphere of the scene, everything is dark, however it has no real depth, here is how to fix that. Changing outdoor ambient will change the ambient colors of exterior, environments ambience, in a hole and ambience is the surrounding variable of something, in this case the lighting. 
It can also simply be things slightly moving, or even slight sounds, we are adding small details that just make sense. This part here is important, the atmosphere's properties revolve around density, offset, glare, and haze. The density changes the amount of atmosphere there is in the scene. Glare and haze change how prominent the colors are, it can go from 0 to 10. Offset controls how the atmosphere connects to the sky background and the camera, making a much smoother transition in the distance. Offset in most cases should be similarly balanced towards your density. A low offset may cause what is called ghosting, which allows parts to be seen through the atmosphere. Next is Bloom. Bloom controls how light blooms up and shines like neon. Bloom has three properties, intensity, size, and threshold. Size allows you to change how much the bloom is present, whereas threshold allows you to control how much bloom is allowed through. Low threshold equals higher bloom. Depth of field is a long-time compositional technique in which you can add blurring in the distance or close to the camera. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory and it just takes some experimenting. In most cases, you don't need this on. Here is a final showcase of the depth of field properties. This next item requires us to make the time of day during the daytime. We are now checking out sun rays. I love Roblox, it allows me to stare at the sun without going blind. The sunbeam has two properties, intensity and spread. Intensity toggles how strong the sunbeams are and spread toggles how much it is dissipated. Sunbeams actively interact with geometry allowing for cooler shadows and low-level volumetric lighting. Let's try making our own with Roblox beams to make beams you want to create a part. And then add two attachments and then add a beam into the part. Inside of the beam properties set attachment 0 and attachment 1 to the corresponding start and end attachments. Sometimes your beams will be on the wrong angle, so you can rotate the attachment to get them facing the right way, typically they are 90 degrees on the wrong end. From here, you want to change the beam color to fit the color it is emitting from, you may have to do some tinkering, as light influence will give it a white tint, and light emission will also give it a neon tint, try to make it brighter than it actually is, keep in mind later on the spotlight attached will give it a brighter color. I am just messing around with my lighting here, you will want to experiment with your own coloring and whatnot. In the transparency section, you will want to click and press the three dots, this allows for a gradient transparency to be applied, you will want to drag up one side to make it flow into transparency and stay fully visible on the other side. And then at the bottom you will want to mess with your width to get it to fit to your likings. I didn't mention it however, change segments to one in beam properties, this makes it more optimized as it reduces the wireframe polygon density. Here we are going to add our spotlight, we want to keep in mind the form of continuity as mentioned earlier, we want it to have a similar color to the part. You want the beam color to be slightly darker than the part color above it. The reason for T is that the spotlight will end up culling it in a better way, making it fit better. The reason you don't just color the beam itself is because in darker settings, the beam will just show up super bright compared to the rest. By doing this it makes it fit in darker scenes and easier to adjust. Again this is mostly just moving stuff around and checking how things fit, so I wanted to take this moment to say I appreciate you watching to the end of the video. Let's refer back to the two-point lighting over here, and use it in a practical case here, so that the lighting will bleed back into itself, as spotlights do not emit light backwards. That will be all for this episode, please let me know what lessons and things you would like videos on in the future, I hope you learned something from this video, goodbye.